we're taking the class over to the St. Luke's um, Radiation Center where they have the cyber knife. And they've been learning about all the different kinds of cancer treatments, and so we're going to let them see it really in action. We're particularly excited because the person who's helping us on the other end is my son Andrew, who's a radiation oncology resident at Baylor. So we're going to—it's a family affair. Dr. Farage, looking very professional today, and uh, so I've told him you're going to be our tour guide because now. Right. Welcome to St. Luke's Cyber Knife. This is our outpatient uh, radiation facility for St. Luke's Hospital. Whatever I need to, to get together to, to make a good lesson is what we do. We'll give you a tour around the place and then a Cyber Knife demo. So what we have in our class is really a very equally balanced mixture of students who are seniors, many of whom are pre-med and are interested in going into the clinical side as well as basic science researchers. So. What we're doing is mixing them up. They get to influence each other, learn from each other, and things like this where they get to see that how the technologies that are being developed actually can benefit patient care. By setting up uh, something like this where they can come out and actually see the machine in action and uh, make the experience of cancer treatment something real to her students, she's able to really make that concept that she's teaching them about specifics of uh, cancer biology and really relate that to something that's going to be a memorable experience and something that even 20 years down the road they can really think back and remember and I think that's what makes her such a special teacher. My son Andrew was always the the one who made me feel really guilty about being a working mom and he was he was a master at saying you know mom all the other parents went on the field trip. All the other kids' mom went on the field trip, and you didn't go. We're going to go one, two, three, four. When he got to college, he and I uh, were, were talking, and he couldn't take my class because of the, the conflict, but a lot of his friends took my class that I taught cell biology then. And he started to realize that maybe I was a pretty good teacher, and he, he said to me, you know, Mom, the older I get, the cooler you get. All right. <laughs> there you go. Oh, and that was a great, great moment for me as a parent. Uh, obviously, I think the world of my mom, and she's you know, one of the reasons that I'm here uh, treating cancer today. So I th what she kind of taught me at home is translated uh, into what she does with her students on a daily basis. People tell me all the time that you know, I've reached a point in my career where I probably don't need to do as much teaching as I do. And I just refuse to quit because I, it's, just, it's why I love to get up in the morning. I love people from 18 to 22 years old or it's just a wonderful age group because they're ready to be uh, who they're going to become as adults. They're ready for that. That's what they're supposed to look like. Yeah. The reason that I came to Rice University is because of the opportunity to work here in the Bioscience Research Collaborative and work with all of these wonderful, smart people. Are you just going to look at morphology or are you going to look at biomarkers? I've been studying bone, first normal bone and now cancer cells that, that grow in bone for literally almost 30 years and that has been a, a process of discovery that is I'm very proud of it but I'm as proud of the people I've trained and so many of them are out now doing faculty things and working in industry and working all over the place so I can't separate my my personal joy and discovery from the joy in watching these young people develop their careers in that area pretty cool huh she's really fun like I really like how she's not like I'm a professor you know, I, like, I'm above you, I'm your superior, or whatever. After a class, if you have a lot of questions, she's not gonna be like, okay, class is over, like, let's go. She's like, oh, do you still wanna tell, let's go to the coffee shop and talk about more about the topic, or, um, or about like the future career that you eventually wanna go into. So she really tries to make a personal connection with you. She's very relaxed and uh, she's fun to be around and she's, she's very excited about what she's teaching and um, she engages the students. The students that are ready to integrate all the things that they've learned and so there's nothing like cancer as a challenge for the mind. Our need to understand not only the biology of cancer but how we can develop new therapies for that is something that we need to engage the next generation of, of bright scholars in and so without that engagement and, and to do that, you have to bring it firsthand. I just got through reading my uh, evaluations for teaching for cancer biology this last semester, and one of the students wrote in there, and it just was a terrific point of pride, said, I never considered cancer biology as a career until I took this course.